So um, welcome to the NT Product Showcase. This is the third of our five live webinars that we are holding, um, helping to connect our tourism industry with the travel industry. So my name is Kieran Smith and I'm the Domestic Distribution Coordinator for Tourism NT. I'll just share my screen. Great, if Rachel just checking, you can see that okay? Uh, not just yet, but I can now. Great. Okay. Lovely. So thanks for tuning in today, everybody. Um, today we're showcasing five of our operators from Uluru, Alice Springs and Surround. So I just want to welcome along today Andrea Lehman from Outback Ballooning, Andrea Glover from Mulgars Adventure Tours, Jackie Costello from Brits in Maui Camper Vans, Greg Zamet from Way Outback Australian Safaris and Julia Burke from Pindon Camel Track. So welcome guys, thank you for being here today. We've got quite a lot to cover, so we'll just keep moving. Um, so today we're focusing on the Uluru, Alice Springs and surrounds the areas. So um, Uluru, Alice Springs along with uh, Kings Canyon and Tennant Creek are what we refer to as the Red Centre, which is the, right in the middle of Australia, as you can see here on this map. So Uluru is possibly the most recognised icon in Australia and one of the greatest natural wonders of the world and definitely a must-see de destination. It's the kind of place that you need to visit to truly understand how deeply spiritual it is. Um, flying, there's lots of flight options into Uluru, so you can fly in from um, the main cities and the main eastern seaboard cities and it takes around three to three and a half hours. And you can also drive from Alice Springs, it's about a five hour drive and from Kings Canyon is about three and a half hours. So the main township in um, near Uluru is called uh, Yulara and it's where Airswat Resort is based, um, which I'm sure most of you will have heard of. Um, and they, for, for people flying into the airport, they offer transfers to their accommodation. Um, and most of the tours in the Yolara Uluru area will do a hotel pickup, which is really, but it's really handy to also um, think about telling your clients about having a rental car so they can get out and explore the area. And there's places such as Katajuda, which is about a 40 minute drive, which is a really nice place to explore. There's also guided tours um, into those areas. So Alice Springs, it's known as the capital of the outback and it's well known for its beautiful desert landscapes, including the vast McDonnell Ranges. Um, there's a really great range of, of activities in and around Alice Springs and we're going to hear about a couple of these today. And it's also well known for its strong Aboriginal culture. So flying into Alice Springs, is quite a, it's quite well connected by air um, and there's direct flights coming in from Adelaide, Brisbane, Sydney and they will take about two to two and a half hours. Um, obviously the, all the flights are at a reduced capacity at the moment, um, but that's what's on offer at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, so the drive from Alice Springs to Uluru takes about five hours. So it's not something that we would recommend um, that you do as a day trip, driving um, to Uluru from Alice Springs in one day in return, unless you're doing a guided tour where there's a few really good options to do that. And from Alice Springs to Kings Canyon, it takes about four and a half hours, but it does depend on the way you go. One route that you can take um, requires four drives. And you can get into Alice Springs also by um, rail, which is on the beautiful GAN. So we'll, um, ha I'll hand you now over to our operators. So we're going to start with Andrea Lehman from Outback Ballooning. So Andrea, I will just stop sharing my screen and you can um, begin to share yours if you're ready to go. Thanks, Karen. Yes, I am. Now I just have to hopefully be able to do this. Um, so hi everybody, I'm Andrea from Outback Ballooning. I'll just do a quick, can everyone see me? Yes, we can. <laughs> I'll just say a quick hi to everybody so they can see my face. Now it's gonna disappear while I share my screen. Okay. And hopefully, good to go. Is that right now? Yep, good, yep. To go. good to go. Good to go. Can't see me? <laughs> no, no. Okay, fine. All right, so um, we are based in Alice Springs and uh, we offer 30 and 60 minute balloon flights. Um, our prices include 
return transfers from most of the Alice Springs accommodation places within town. Um, if people are staying out in the rural areas, we will need to speak to them um, as to whether we can pick up from there or not. Um, we can also drop off uh, to attractions um, around Alice Springs as well, and airport transfers are also available. Um, we offer light refreshments um, after the flight has landed, um, accompanied by some sparkling wine and fruit juice. Um, we say to people allow up to four hours for our tour. Um, now, this just depends on where we're picking you up from, um, where we take off, where we land, um, how many people are on the. So there's varying reasons as to why we say that, but up to four hours just gives everyone a bit of an idea um, when they're planning their itinerary. Pickup times are about an hour prior to first light, which obviously changes throughout the year. So in the middle of summer, pickups can be as early as 4 a.m. and as late as 6 a.m. in the middle of winter. Um, we do note to a lot of people that um, just due to varying operational factors, um, we may be on the ground when um, the sun starts to come up. It just kind of depends, but we do aim to take off at first light. And most of the time that does happen, but of course, being weather dependent, it is totally out of our control. Um, we do suggest that um, where possible, the balloon flights uh, should be booked the first day, available day that your customers are in the area, um, just in case there is bad weather. Um, what to wear? Um, we are in the outback, so lots of nice red dirt, so we recommend outdoor clothing long pants, um, hats, caps are recommended, enclosed footwear, um, and then obviously in wintertime, um, it does get very cold. So we do suggest um, jackets and um, beanies. Um, just to note that um, loose items such as dangling jewelry and scarves are not permitted um, once they reach the launch site and disembark from the bus. Oops, I'm going the wrong way. Okay. Um, so physical fitness is not um, necessarily a requirement to enjoy ballooning, um, but your passengers need uh, to be able to climb up and into the basket. Um, so for those that haven't done it, the balloon basket's about 1.2 metres high, and there's footholds at the end which kind of act like a ladder. Um, so then they just need to be able to climb up swing the leg over, hop into a very small confined space and um, then stand for the duration of the flight. Uh, just noting that um, we are not permitted to fly women over 12 weeks. Um, anybody with illnesses or recent operations, we do need to talk to them prior to booking their flight or, or speak to you, um, I guess, regarding that, um, just to make sure that it is safe uh, for them to fly. Um, we do ask people to pack up, help pack up the um, the balloon after we um, finish the flight. It is optional. Um, obviously, it's a bit of fun for a lot of people to try and um, help pack up that um, balloon. And if anybody saw us on Amazing Race this week, um, you'll know that the contestants had a fun task and they had to actually try and pack up the balloon on their own. Our passengers don't have to go that far, um, but they just help get the air out of the balloon. Um, we also, I guess, now have um, implemented, um, in you know, regards to COVID, we've imp implemented obviously a few additional um, things to ensure the safety of everybody. Um, so when people arrive, uh, we will have be offering masks, we offer hand sanitizers, um, we make sure that people hop onto the bus in single file down to the back and then load on. And then when they load off, they're loading off the opposite way just so that there's no um, crossing over of people. We do ask people to um, socially distance when they're out of the bus um, in their groups. And again, we're offering sanitizer that whole time as well. Um, our passengers will receive a COVID-19 safety information document upon confirmation that will give them all this detail. 
And then also the day before we do have an online check-in waiver that we do um, require people to fill out. Um, that includes some COVID questions as well and some necessary questions like the pregnancy um, and illness section as well. And we do check that the day before to make sure that everybody is able to fly with us safely the next day. Um, you can see on the screen our pricing, our flights uh, prices are commissionable. So as an agent, you would be taking the flight price, which is in red, uh, so 275 say for an adult for a 30 minute flight. And then the passengers are required to pay the $30 um, mandatory civil aviation insurance, um, which is um, payable to us direct after the flight. Um, as you can see there, our child price is six to 16 years. We can take children three to five years, but we generally don't recommend. Oh my God, um, I got in. It's only like 15 minutes They later. generally can't see over the side of the basket because it's 1.2 metres high um, and we're not allowed to pick them up and lean them over the basket. Um, and then also the noise of the burners can scare them, so it can be quite scary as well. But if the parents, you know, after they know this, say, no, no, that's fine, then we're happy to take the child. Um, now I'm going to show you a little video so that you can um, have a little flight with us. Um, one of the big questions that we do get asked, asked um, quite a bit is, can you see Uluru from the balloon? Um, now, given that Karen has just told you the um, how far away Uluru is from Alice Springs, um, I would be hoping that you're all shaking your head and saying, no, of course you can't see the balloon, um, Uluru from the balloon. Um, and so now I will show you a quick presentation of our flight. Hi, I'm Duncan from Outback Ballooning. I'm a pilot and crew, and I'm here to tell you the best reasons why you should fly in the Outback. You get to check out the majestic McDonald Ranges. You glide into the sunrise and you float over the desert. So come and join me on a flying adventure. We might even wake up some roos or some cattle. Ballooning in the desert really brings out the romance of the outback. Outback for Learning in Alice Springs. Lovely, and thanks. there we go. That's, that's our presentation. So thanks for uh, listening. Thanks for that, Andrew. That was really interesting. I love that video. Um, we had a few questions come through. Just um, one of them was about the balloon chase. Can you just talk about that? Oh, yes. I always forget to talk about that. Um, yeah, so the balloon chase is when you've got... Um, say a family and um, one person doesn't particularly want to go flying, but they still want to enjoy the experience with the family. So that person would be picked up exactly the same way. They would go out to the launch site. The passengers flying would hop on um, the flight and then that person would stay with the crew and on the bus and then chase the balloon, follow the balloon until they get to where the balloon lands and then join their party and have the, you know, the light refreshments and everything. And um, yeah, that's what a balloon chase is. Sounds good. Um, there was another question about capacity with COVID. Is your, has your capacity come down with the, in the basket or, or what's the story there? Um, yeah, I guess some um, in terms of our capacity, um, yeah, we, we are making allowances, um, I guess, that uh, there are less people than normal in a basket. 
Um, but with um, at the way that it works with ballooning, obviously people are hopping in and they're facing outwards. So there doesn't, you know, there's no sort of like you're not right. You might be standing beside someone, but you're looking outwards. Um, and we do offer face masks so that if anybody feels like, because obviously ballooning by its very nature is going to be quite compact. We can't have just, you know, two people in a in a balloon that would, you know, in a uh, the compartment that would normally take six because weight wise we wouldn't even be able to fly. Um, so we do have to take that into consideration as well, but we certainly would offer masks if people did feel that they were a little bit close, but you're looking out, you don't have to look sideways. Okay, great. And actually there was another t um, question about a private tour. Do you do that if there were say four people wanting to go on yes. their own? Yep, yep, absolutely, absolutely. Um, we would need to quote on that. It would depend on the time of the year and availability and everything. Um, but yep, certainly that would be a different pricing to um, what I showed on the presentation. Can you see that? Yep, we can. And okay. We're we right to go, sorry everyone. Good to know that other people have a slight little bit of problem there too. Um, welcome, I'm Jackie Costello. I'm the global, global sales support person for THL. Um, we operate Maui, Brits and Mighty camper vans in both Australia and New Zealand. Um, and I'll talk to you a little bit more about choosing the right brands as we go through the presentation. Um, we've got 13 branches in Australia and New Zealand combined, but two in the NT, which is great. Uh, Darwin and Alice Springs. These are great locations for customers to fly into. Um, pick up your camper van from, from Alice, do your trip down to the Kings Canyon, the Rock, wherever you want to go out to the West McDonald Ranges, drop the camper van off and then fly back to your, um, your destination. Um, we say, why experience a camper van holiday? Why would I choose a camper van over a, an alternative? And we know there's a lot of choices on how to travel the NT. And we believe the camper van holiday is the best way to go. Um, you can roam free, so you go where you want. You've got a room with a view. If you don't like the view, just move. Um, you'd be social in a camper van. So often, you'll, if you weren't in a camper, you'd pull up to a hotel, you switch on, you, you open your door, sorry, you open your door, you switch on the telly, and then you don't see anyone. In a camper van, you're more likely to walk around your caravan park or your environment, say good day to fellow campers, talk about where you've been, where you're going, um, learn stuff from other people, um, and you're with like-minded people. And with a camper van, you allow for surprises. There's always that road and you wonder where it takes you and uh, off you go. Um, and of course, connecting with nature. Uh, what's outside of your door in a camper van in the NT could be anything. It could be the cheeky goanna, could be the emus, the camels, the wild horses. Um, our company is driven on being the best. So we've got an Auckland based contact centre that operates 24 seven. We've got dedicated on road care team. If there's an issue on the road, the customer just needs to call the number on their key ring and they'll reach the on road care team. Um, we've got customer care team for post travel issues. If something happened and they can't resolve it in the branch at the end of their trip, there's someone there to help them. Um, we've got a dedicated online agent resource centre. Um, I'll cover that off later. Um, excitingly, we've got a new B2B booking system coming, meant to be this week, should be next week. Um, it's called Cosmos and it's full of enhancements on the booking system and we hope that it's going to make your life easier, whether um, you're dealing through a wholesale partner or, or directly with us. Um, our company is totally customer driven. We've got a CEO who cares very much. Um, we're an experienced and trusted camper van company. We've introduced COVID safe processes and procedures. We send pre-travel comms to the customers to help them prepare for their trip. Um, and we also ask you, make sure you give us the customer's email address in advance. Um, more importantly now than ever, because if a sudden lockdown occurs, um, our phones usually get bombarded and we can contact them in advance. We can also talk to them about when to collect their vehicle or 
um, if there's any issues, we can, we've got direct contact. Um, we've got telemedics in our um, all of our vehicles, and this is a safety measure. We can see if the customers are in or near danger zones. Um, our team will contact them via phone or email if we can see they're out lost in the bush um, or, or on a road that they shouldn't be on. Um, and also it's for safety. If we can see a customer is travelling in a six berth vehicle and they're doing 140 kilometres an hour, we can contact them and let them know it's not safe. Um, our vehicles all have in-dash media units. Um, we're technology driven um, and we believe we're the best. Um, the Roadlink media unit comes with Bluetooth technology. Um, that means they can, uh, you can pair your phone, um, get your tunes going, and there's also training videos. We've launched a new free, of course, um, road trip app. Um, we encourage customers to download it before they travel, and we encourage you to have a look at it as well. Um, it accesses handy tips for planning, what to expect when they pick up their camper van. Um, there's links to their booking number. They can see the vehicle they've got. It's got some comprehensive on the road help. And of course, most importantly, the how to videos. This is so that it, if they get on the road and they go, oh gosh, how do I, how do, I do this again? All the videos are there um, and they're very, very easy to use. Um, we've got a multitude of resources available on an image library. Um, it's easy to log in and then access a raft of content, especially if you're going to do any promotions or social media and you wanted some photographs. And um, we've just put a whole lot of new stuff on the NT up there. So it's, it's beautiful and I'm very excited. Um, we've got images there, specification sheets and comparison sheets. We know sometimes you don't, sorry, you don't know what's the difference between vehicles. Um, there's living equipment things that sometimes customers, they want to see, they want to have it, and it's all there on our library. Um, that's just some examples of what's there, and it includes, you know, your child seats, of course. Um, we've got itinerary help available, and if you've got customers that are looking for itinerary ideas, we've got a number that we can suggest, and these are obviously designed for camper van holidays. Um, and there's no doubt Tourism NT have got a raft on their website as well. Ours do give you, you know, ideas of how long the drive is between each location. Hope um, you're noticing Outback Ballooning is on that five day Red Centre one there. Um, so Maui, Brits and Mighty, these are our three brands and it's about you choosing the right vehicle for your customer. Um, Maui's the premium brand um, and that means it's been the vehicle would have been on our fleet for up to two years. Um, here's a couple of suggest, you know, um, pictures of the vehicles, the two and the three berth, they are the same vehicle. Um, they have a barbecue on the side on, on those smaller, these smaller vehicles. Um, and there is what we call an elite option. That's why when we were building brand new and it was under 12 years old, you could select the elite model. Um, there's a, it, some are available and some are not right now. So um, COVID, thank you, you're a pain. Um, there's the four birth Cascade, which is a smaller vehicle. So it's got no overhead sleeping arrangement over the driver's cab. Um, some people do like that. Um, and the four and six, again, it's the same vehicle. We just kit them out differently for six people if there's six traveling and four for four traveling. Um, and they have awnings, of course. Um, Brits is the home of adventure. Brits leads the way with innovation and diversification. So in Australia, we have four wheel drives in our Brits fleet, and we also have vehicles that don't have toilet and showers. Um, the Brits vehicles, they were once Maui's in the larger vehicles. Uh, once they had become two years old in a Maui, they had become a Brits. So you'll see those three little vehicles on the top. Um, they are brand new, they weren't Maui's before, but the venture of vehicles, they were once Maui's and now they're Brits. Um, and then the larger vehicles again, um, the ones, sorry that some of it says New Zealand, um, 
we're only talking about Australia right now, so you can just look at the ones with AU on it. And again, those vehicles were once Maui's and now they're Brits vehicles. Um, and then we have two four wheel drive vehicles available. Um, these are new, we get them every year. They're beautiful and new and they're available from the NT branches and WA this year only. We're not doing Queensland. Um, they're great for adventure travellers. There's a choice of the rooftop sleeping or the tent on the ground. Um, one's a manual vehicle and the other's automatic. And they come with kitchens that pull out of the back. But these don't have 240 volts, so these are for campers. Um, they're Mighty. Mighty's our value brand. They were once Brits or Maui's, as I've spoken about before, but they've been ours all along and maintained by THL. So just a quick look there at those vehicles as they've been rebranded to Maui. A couple of things to note, um, seasonal branches for Alice Springs and Darwin, they're not open all year round. We welcome one-way travel um, and one-way fees do apply. Um, and at different times we do offer discounts on those one-way fees. We always suggest check the, op the directional um, option. So, you know, is, a, is an Alice Springs to Darwin gonna be cheaper than a Darwin to Alice Springs, for example, because sometimes there is um, a discount one way depending on where the fleet is and don't forget that um, two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive vehicles they do have some um, some different terms um, we oh, recommend... Jackie, just, just one minute to go oh you... yeah i'm nearly there i'm, on, I'm almost finished um, we do recommend staying in holiday parks um, and we know national parks up in that area is just the best. So um, customers need to be mindful if they're in national parks without power, uh, their vehicle won't work after a couple of days. Peace of mind promise, certified business practices in all of our branches. We're doing contactless check-ins and we've developed COVID-19 cleaning procedures in the branches. And that's all. Any questions? Sorry, I went over time. No, that's all good. Thank you for that, Jackie. There was one question about the difference between premium standard and budget. Uh, so that is premium is their newer vehicles when that's how they become premium they start off brand new straight out of our factory um, in Braybrook and then once they've been on the road for a couple of years they move into the next level they become a Brits and then once they've been a Brits for a while they become a, a mighty. Okay that makes sense. Um, Rachel were there any other questions? Just one that has come through now. Um, can you pick up any of the vehicles from Uluru, Jackie, or is it just Alice Springs? Sorry, it's just Alice Springs. Okay, great. All right, well, thank you so much for that, Jackie. That was really interesting. Um, next, we'll move back to Andrea Glover from Mulga Adventure Tours. Andrea, did you manage to get your presentation working? Hi. Um, well, we didn't get the video working, but that's that's not really here nor there. That was just a bit of fun to show you. Um, but so we can continue with our presentation. So okay, I shall. Great. So I'll, we'll just start with introducing ourselves. So welcome to Mulder's Adventures. My name's Andrea, and I'm the general manager and part owner of the company. G'day, I'm Dan Sutcliffe, uh, formerly a guide and now a marketing manager with Mulder's. So thanks for joining. Uh, thanks for your interest today and joining uh, the Tourism NT Product Showcase. We're actually really excited to be speaking with you all live today. Uh, you can see it's not something we do terribly often, uh, but it's a chance for us to tell you why we think you should definitely choose a Mulga tour. So bear and with us. Slide show this one. Yeah, the play. Yep. Oh yeah. Right. Can you see that, everybody? Yep. Yep. Okay. So at Mulgas, we keep to our core strength, which has always been fun and affordable Uluru camping tours. Essentially, we have one product, Uluru camping tours, uh, with options of three days or four days. This tour is full of laughter and enjoyment, and we absolutely love to see people in groups bonding and forming lifetime friendships. In fact, Mulgers is rated number one outdoor activity in the area on TripAdvisor. We have some great feedback, and it's not just all about the fun people are having, but um, other things like our food. 
we cater to most dietary requirements and we offer an Aussie barbecue dinner and breakfasts on tour. Not to mention you, you really love the uh, cold fresh fruit after a warm hike. So don't just take our word for it, check us out on Google and Facebook and as Dan said, TripAdvisor. Yeah, we all know those three. So there are times on tour when we, we do work hard to achieve goals together, like those larger hikes. But there's also plenty of personal R&R &R time where you might like to cool down in the pool or do your own thing. Our product is designed around a sense of group and achieving together. Our guests are what makes the tour. We know we're giving people a once in a lifetime experience and we take that on with a passion. Actually, there are a few good reasons why people choose Mulder's Adventures. For example, we can connect with early flights departing from Azrock Airport. We enjoy a more relaxed tour schedule because being in a rush is not fun. No. Uh, we'll get your hands dirty. It's camping. Our passengers generally don't want everything done for them, so getting involved makes it a real experience. And having options during activities like hiking. So if you don't really fancy doing a long hike, you might prefer a shorter stroll or even just sit back under a tree. You'll also appreciate having only experienced, knowledgeable and accredited Australian guides on a mobile tour. And you learn how to prepare traditional Aussie damper. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I might. Sometimes with marshmallows. Well, that's how I do it. <laughs> Sleeping under a million bright stars by a campfire. Some call it million star accommodation. And staying at our exclusive Mulgers bush camp with breathtaking views of Mount Connor, sorry, Mount Connor for sunset. And it's absolutely a night to remember. It's the favourite night. Yeah, it's the best really. Finally, with Mulgers, you get value for money. We, uh, we make choosing an Uluru tour easy. Well, we try to do that by fixing one price that is all inclusive. Of course, there are still optional extras. So passengers don't need to worry about bringing extra cash on tour. It can be a little harsh in the Australian desert, but we teach you ways to overcome challenges and keep each other safe. And we've added much more detail about our three and four day itineraries, and that will be available shortly in our PowerPoint, which will be shared with you today. So um, many of you are already familiar with our tour format. For today, we've focused on how we uh, think we're different and uh, perhaps even maybe a little bit better than before. And we hope you've enjoyed the showcase. And thank you everyone for having for joining us today. And sure. if you've got any questions, yeah. thank, thank you. That was really that was really fun. Um, we have had some questions actually. One um, I'll get through a couple, and then Rachel, I might have missed some. There's been a few questions about age. What's your average age group, and sort of what age are you targeted at? We don't really have an age group. Um, we just say if you're young or young at heart, you're more than welcome to come along and join us. Obviously, it's camping on in swags on the ground and it's a participation style tour. So you'll be helping collect firewood and cooking and all that sort of thing. Basically, you need the passengers to decide for themselves. And the way we do, we sort of tackle that challenge it is not by having a strict rule, but having a you know, offering a lot of details about the itinerary so people can make that choice. Great. Okay, great. Um, the next one was about tenting. Is it it's tenting accommodation, right? No, it's all swag accommodation. We supply the swags and it's all swagging under the stars. Proper camping in Australia. None of that uh, lamping business. <laughs> All right. Um, have you started your um, season for 2021? Are you doing tours at the moment? We kick off on the 1st of April this year, ready, just in time for Easter. Okay, great. All right. And then there was just a question about if someone was to be injured or they had a snake bite or something, do you have some kind of process in place for that? Yeah, all our guys are fully trained in first aid. Um, there's also medical um, places at Yalara and at Kings Canyon. So we're, it's not, nothing's too far when we're out there. We've got first aid kits in our hiking packs as well as larger ones on uh, based in the bus as well. So uh, 
little things little things happen but snake bites so far we haven't had one so let's just keep that record going yeah <laughs> great hey rachel i think there are a few more questions have you got some there i may have missed yeah, uh, just a few about your minimum and maximum numbers. Uh, is that the same across the board or does it vary trip to trip? No, um, it's across the board. So at, look, coming into the season, uh, we have maximum of 24 and minimum is around about 10. So if, if for some reason we cannot um, fulfil the tour, we will actually just try and put them on with a, a, a partnering company. Okay, great. Was there anything else, Rachel? Just one more question. Are you guys open to doing any variations on your tours? We've got a question about a charter and potentially have, having a second guide. So are you open to requests like that? We are. We do actually do a lot of charters, um, and it would just be specific to the to the um, customers' needs. We can work out different itineraries and um, provide extra, um, you know, just the whole work. So film crews, school groups. Yeah, we've done plenty. Great. Great. And Great, actually, thanks. Someone, sorry, Rachel. Someone just asked about. Um, do you, I'm not sure if you can say who your partner company is, but that was the question that came through. Well, it is a bit tricky at the moment because we're not 100% sure on who's coming back um, from COVID. Um, in the past, uh, well, it, it may be way out back team because they are doing more high-end tours. So if that's the situation and we have to put someone on the on their tour, we would pay the difference. Okay, great. We prefer okay. obviously not to do that. So, um, yeah, we, we will try to thing. just yeah. run the tour regardless okay great all we're right coming, well, thank you. we're coming into a new world we're not sure um on everything as yet for those sorts of situations but we know it's going to work and we can't yeah. wait to get back out there <laughs> great all right thank you so much for that it was really fun um and just speaking of way out back tours we've got greg zamet um next up so greg if you want to start your presentation that would be great Thank you, Karen. Uh, thanks, Andrea, and that for your presentation. Just get mine up here now. Good afternoon, everybody. I think you should be able to see it now. There we go. Right, so uh, my name's Greg Zamet. I'm one of the owners of Way Outback Safaris. Um, I'm normally based in uh, the UK doing the international marketing, but uh, since a lovely COVID's occurred, I've been back in Adelaide uh, for 12 months, helping out with the business. So the business has essentially been hibernated since October. Um, we're talking about our Red Centre tours today, but the company's actually been operating in the Red Centre since 1999 for 21 years, and we've been operating in the top end for about the last decade. Um, since COVID struck, we did operate uh, some uh, minimal departures right through till about June and then we kind of just ran out of customers because traditionally about 85% of our Red Centre, oh sorry, yes our Red Centre clients are international um, but we're gearing up now, we're about to start again from April 1. Um, I'm pleased to say we've already filled about 40% of our Red Centre capacity so those that are worried about guaranteed departures, we're off to a good start for this season. So the company is operating all four wheel drive trips this year. Uh, we've always ran the Red Centre year round, but this year without our international clients, we'll be operating from April till October. Now that's for our scheduled FIT program for our scheduled tours, which I'll give you a look at in the moment. But we also offer many uh, private charters and group tours. And about 20% of the revenue that we've got locked in for this season already is for scheduled groups and uh, private charters, mainly uh, small family groups, actually. 
for this year. So a lot of Australians are coming out and wants, wanting something a bit more personalised, and uh, we're doing that. Now you'll see on this first slide, we offer comfortable camping tours that makes up about 80% of our product mix. But we also in the red centre offer a higher end, very small group accommodated tour as well in four star accommodation, which we Greg, call out. Sorry, Greg, sorry to interrupt. Um, we're not on to the first, the second slide yet. We're still on oh, your oh, Sorry about that. It's showing at my end. Um, can you see the slide of the Aboriginal fellow with two guests? No, just your intro slide. Ah, for some reason it's got stuck. It hasn't moved on. Hang on just a minute. Yep, that's uh, it. Thanks for that, Karen. Much All appreciated. Right. All right, so as I was just saying, the tours we predominantly focus on are our camping tours, and I'll give you a look at our permanent comfortable campsites in just a moment but in the red center we also offer a four-star accommodated eco tour in land rover discovery vehicles so basically the vehicles we're using are land rover discovery for the accommodated package in the red center and then we use large overland isuzu trucks which carry a maximum of 18 customers our tours are generally focused on couples or singles traveling alone. And so the majority of our permanent tents that are set up are in twin share configuration. But we also have about 15% of our customers are families. So we have three tents in each permanent campsite, which can also cater to families as well. Um, all the guides are eco accredited and way out back for more than a decade has had the highest level of eco certification, which is level four eco certification. And we're pleased to say we've already got 27 guides set up ready to start with us from April one. So we've uh, managed despite hibernating the business for uh, nearly six months, we've managed to uh, keep our guides on the books and, and they're getting ready to go again. Something we've changed with COVID for this year, we've traditionally used one driver guide per tour, um, but we're increasing our level of service this year so that we'll have two tour guides on every trip. So the good thing about having the second guide, not only from a COVID position in terms of uh, additional food hygiene, wiping the vehicles down between walks etc having two guides is also fantastic when you have a mixed age group on your tours now our domestic market is traditionally a 45 to 50 plus age group um, and we have a lot of customers in their 60s and 70s so in the red center this is particularly good to have a second guide because when you're doing walks such as Catajuta into the Olgas or at Kings Canyon, where you have a choice of two walks, which may vary in length, anything from two to three kilometers through to seven to eight kilometers in places like the Valley of the Winds. It's good to have the two guides if you've got a varying fitness level amongst your customers. So at Katajuta this year, for example, we'll actually split, uh, split up the groups, sorry, into the two groups. And uh, those that are fitter will do a full Valley of the Winds walk, whereas our older clients that may be not so fit, they'll go with the second guide and do a shorter walk. All right, now hopefully you can see this slide this time. Um, it's not the prettiest of slides and I won't go into a lot of detail here, but this shows you our scheduled touring program that we're running for the April to October period. As I said, they're all four wheel drive tours. Um, we launched the programs back in October for an April one start so that we had plenty of lead time. And we announced to the trade that all the tours will be operating with a start and finish from Uluru. We're about to send out another announcement next week to say that the tours can also start from Alice Springs. So I think the most important thing is we're maximising the flight capacity into both Alice Springs and Yulara, and uh, clients will be able to join at either place. Oh my goodness, sorry about this. They probably, it's okay, probably. 
Uh, just okay. Adobe jumped in there. Yes, so we'll be maximising the opportunity so that clients can start in either Alice or Yulara, but finishing the tours in Yulara. Uh, the group size we've already spoken about. All of the camping tours, as I mentioned, are in permanent tents, but we also have enough swags based in our campsite so that those people that want to be a little bit more adventurous and sleep out under the stars, which I love myself, they'll be able to do that as well. Um, you'll just see the price point down the bottom of this table. That's our adult and our child gross rates, just to give you an idea. And the tours are all inclusive of meals, uh, indigenous tours, national parks, the whole lot. It's just to give you an idea. And the tours are all inclusive of meals, uh, indigenous tours, national parks, the whole lot. Now, just in the last couple of minutes, I'll just give you a, a bit of a look at a few images just to give you a bit of a taste for the product. You'll see here um, our camps at Uluru. So you can see the aerial shots of our two permanent campsites in that bottom right hand corner and then a closer shot from a drone of how the campsites are set up. The tents are a little bit closer in Uluru than they are on any of our other tours simply because of the limited space that we have there. We do spread them out a lot more in the other locations, but it just gives you a bit of a feel for the product. They all have dining tents and you'll see that they're quite spacious inside. They all have solar lighting um, and plenty of ventilation. In terms of our vehicles, these are the main touring vehicles that we use. As I said, they're an Isuzu four-wheel drive truck, so they're full four-wheel drive vehicles. We have large windows for excellent viewing. They're very comfortable with reclining seats uh, that fold back, um, giving a lot of leg room as well. And of course, they're all fully air conditioned. For those that want to be a little bit more adventurous, as I mentioned, and maybe some of you haven't seen a swag before. So that photo in the top right hand corner there, um, that's one of our lasses in one of the swags that we use. And as I said, that's a great experience for out under the stars. We also use them as additional seating around the campfire at night, which is quite nice. All right, so that gives you a bit of an overview and if there's a minute or two for questions that'd be great. Great thanks Greg. Um, we did have a couple come through but then you answered them with your presentation so unless there's any more coming through now um, people can just contact you on your email address which was just there what was it reservations at way out back. That's the one thank you Karen. No problem well thank you so much for that that looks awesome I, I really like the look of your tours your tours there. All right, next we've got Julia Burke from um, the Pindon Camel Tracks. Julia, do you want to present your screen? Hi everyone, I'm Julia from Pindan Camel Tracks. Welcome to Alice Springs. Thanks so much for joining us. Now I'm wondering, are you all a little bit exhausted? Because what I want to share with you right now is an exciting opportunity that you never thought you'd have going camel riding in Alice Springs. So put your hands on your knees, have a look at your computer, and I'm going to take you on a little journey of relaxation. That is what we have to offer at Pindan Camel Tracks. Just have to go back, so close your eyes for a minute. I'm going to get all sorted. Keep your eyes closed, and I'll let you know when to open them. Okay, open your eyes, stare at the screen and imagine that's you on a camel in the middle of the outback, not far from Alice Springs.
Hi, everyone. I'm back again. Now, that was far too short, wasn't it? Can you just imagine how it would be sitting on this big animal that you thought was going to be so scary, but really, our camels are so incredibly well trained and what they have, are, they all have a unique personality. And really what we want people to learn and enjoy is the opportunity to find out how amazing these gentle animals are. So I've prepared a little presentation for you. So we always have people say, oh, that was the highlight of my trip. A camel ride against the backdrop of the Western McDonald Ranges is that signature Red Centre experience. It's an iconic experience and it's an adventure that people remember for a lifetime. So we offer camel tours in Alice Springs and we're the only camel tour operator in Alice Springs. We are 20 minutes from the centre of town. All our tours offer transfers from the ho your hotel and we have no weight restrictions or age restrictions. So our mission is really to introduce people to camels so they can go away with such a pleasant experience of meeting these beautiful camels. We have three tours a day, 12 noon, 2.30 and sunset. With our tours are at one out for one hour and they go into a cattle station called White Gums and they have sweeping views up close to the majestic McDonald Ranges. Always we see animals and at sunset, it's the most popular ride. And we also have light refreshments included in the price. So our prices are 79 for adults or 39 for kids. Kids are three to 14 years. And the sunset ride is 89 for adults and 39 for kids. We uh, work with travel agents and we offer a 10% commission, which is negotiable. Kids that are under two, they travel free on their adult's lap. We can take 12 passengers per tour so it's a lovely small group type of tour. Highlights are getting to know your camel. It's a really fun activity for a small group and it's relaxing in the wide open spaces of the centre. You get to see animals from uh, lots, lots of kangaroos just are out there letting the camels go past. It's a great photo opportunity. When we're halfway through the tour, we climb a hill and we overlook a gap in the McDonald Ranges and the Camelie will borrow your camera if you'd like. It's so important to be sun smart when you're in the outback and keep hydrated. So we ask everyone to, to become really sun smart and aware. Each booking, well, each camel can hold two people. So for every booking, we really consider that we are socially distanced. And so it's only one booking who sit on each camel. We don't mix up our bookings with our people, with people they don't know on a camel. So we try and make our tools, all abilities accessible. However, you do need to have some fitness because you've got to hold yourself on the camel independently. You've got to pull yourself up onto the seat. There are some steps that you need to climb. So we highly recommend that uh, there is a medium level of fitness. You want to be able to squat a bit, like sort of riding a motorbike. And uh, we have a car park and that's about 200 metres from where you get on your camel. So it's really important that all our guests are okay walking for at least 200 metres and squatting and being able to hold themselves because safety is so important. Nothing worse than going on a holiday and feeling unsafe because it really ruins the experience. Everyone meets at the Camel Lounge and we've got wonderful displays about camels in Australia, how they came to be the, uh, the backbone of opening up the outback. What do they drink? Did you know they've got three eyelashes? No, three eyelids. It's just they're such well-adapted animals. 
and it's the Camel Lounge where we have our free complimentary refreshments after the sunset ride. Of course, safety is a priority. Marcus Williams, who began the company in 2000, has more than 35 years experience working with camels and his camels are well trained. We always give an introductory talk. Our customers sign waivers and wear helmets and really clear instructions are given about getting on and off the camel. Well, let's help stop the spread of coronavirus. And we have uh, a very, very solid COVID-19 safety plan. We've got registration through ATEC, through the safe travels, through the Australian Quality Tourism Framework. We have the COVID Clean Practicing Certificate. We have a COVID safety plan, which we have to review every six months with the NT government. So of course, our COVID safety practice is highly important and we want to make sure that our guests know that we are doing our utmost to keep them safe to, and to keep our staff safe. We uh, use the Fair Harbour booking system and we can uh, link any travel agent who would like to be linked as an affiliate booking capacity through this system. Otherwise, you can phone us direct or send us an email. We have accreditation through Ecotourism Australia. We have the quality tourism tick through a uh, sustainable tourism business. We have our ATEC tourism trade checklist with safe travels. We have been really conscious to make sure that we have accreditation that's recognised worldwide. We can also take a loading platform, which you see there in the picture, to a venue like the Telegraph Station in Alice Springs and do group rides. We can do tailor-made groups and conventions from our property and a group tour would require 10 persons to depart. So do send us an email if that's something that would interest your customers. We do catering at Pin Down Camel Tracks. We've done camel rides with workshops like dot painting workshops or weaving um, fiber baskets. And that's an added extra. And we would negotiate what your guests would like. We have a YouTube channel. If you uh, Google YouTube pin down camel tracks and you'll get to see some more of our videos. So please keep in touch. If you'd like to take a screenshot or a photo of my contact details, we'd really love to hear from you. So now we've got one extra video that I would like to show you and I am just going to pull it up. Pindan Camel Tracks. Share the love with a camel. If you've got friends visiting the Alice or you're visiting, get up high and see the Red Centre. Relax and unwind with our sunset tours with the most well-behaved hosts. Pinned and Camel Tracks, Alice Springs. Okay, can you just say that, Rachel? Yep, all good, go ahead. Okay, cool. So I just want to quickly mention the competition that we've got running as part of the product showcase. We've got six really awesome prize packages up for grabs. Um, all of our operators that have been involved in this have donated a prize and we've put them together with flights. So there's flights, return flights for two um, with each of the packages and they are from um, the main cities in either New Zealand or Australia, depending on where the winner is based. So um, to enter, you need to you need to answer at least 10 of the questions. We've got 31 operators involved. There's 31 questions. So you need to answer 10 of those questions. You can do that on our website, which is at thetourismnt.com.au slash trade slash showcase, which is at the bottom there. So um, please make sure you do that. And that closes on the 5th of March. So you've got a bit of time. All the webinars will be up on the website um, in the next the few days after they've been um, recorded so that you can watch anything that you may have already missed. Uh, just a couple of events that we've got happening um, at the moment. Wrapping up next month is the Million Dollar Fish. If you've got clients that are interested in fishing, this is a really brilliant thing to tell them about to come up to the Northern Territory. There's been Barramundi that have been tagged with um, different values and there's some, I think there's one um, 
tagged with a million dollars. If you catch that fish, you get a million dollars, but there's other um, values as well, $10,000 and $5,000. So that's kind of a cool thing if you've got someone that wants to come up and do a bit of fishing. Um, Pajama, which is a really beautiful Aboriginal light experience that takes place in Alice Springs. That's happening in April um, and it's highly recommended to come along and um, experience that. It um, takes place in the West McDonald Ranges. And the Taste of Kakadu is a really beautiful food and cultural event that takes place in the Kakadu National Park. Um, NT Summer Sale is a campaign that we've got in market at the moment. Um, you've probably all heard of it. It's when uh, you can, if you book, if you're booking NT products, you and your your customer spends a thousand dollars, they save two hundred dollars. It's booked through our campaign partners, Halloran Flight Centre or, or Holidays of Australia. So this has still got another six weeks to go. And if you've got a client that wants to leave on the 31st of March and return on during April, that's still um, part of the campaign. That still works for you. You get fifty dollars with every. Um, booking that you make and for every five bookings you get an entry into a winner place on a really fantastic NT for mill that we're running later in the year. Um, the trade training program which you've hopefully heard about we run this every quarter so the product showcase has been part of our um, February uh, trade training program will run it again in another three months. We have a webinar, we'll have operators on board, we have um, online training modules and lots of great prizes. So please sign up for that if you haven't done already. That's on our trade website. And just with the um, product showcase, we've got two more live webinars. They take place next week. There's one for Uluru, Alice and Surrounds, our different operators, and there's another one for Darwin and Surrounds. Um, so please register if you haven't. Uh, all the webinars will be recorded and will go onto our website so you can watch them when at, at, at your leisure and we also have nine pre-recorded webinars with operators that aren't attending the live webinars so please watch them and there's a really good resource there um, enter our competition just you just have to answer 10 of the questions and that's the website um, we have a couple of spot prizes um, up for grabs today so uh, what the prizes are, are from Viva La Body which is a really cool NT based um, company that produce these beautiful uh, vegan products, lots of um, beauty products and that sort of thing. So we have these really cool jet set packs, they're really small and compact and great for travel. So um, if we have got a Shana Murray from HTG and an Elise Monaghan from Travel Associates on the webinar today, we'll be sending them a pack of that. Um, and that's it for everybody. So thank you for attending. Um, we really appreciate you coming along and taking the time to listen to um, our operators. If you've got any questions about anything to do with the NT, you can either contact myself, my email address is there, or um, if you've got want to get in touch with any of our operators, please feel please feel free to do that. I will send out their contact details in the next day so that you've got those all there. So that is it from me. Um, unless there's any questions, um, we will wrap that up there. So thanks very much for attending everybody and uh, we will see you again soon.